So thank you, Hilpa. My name is Matti Kemarainen. Uh, I work in Climate Center, and uh, I will try to tell something about our studies related to different climate data sets. Uh, yes. About the climate zoology. Uh, here in Finland and in, in Northern Europe, we have a very uh, variating uh, climate and uh, the, those synoptic scale and mesoscale low pressure systems that develop in the North Atlantic, they, they mm, uh, respond to this uh, strong variability. And to get get information about those uh, uh, low pressure systems, we need uh, some special tools for that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> about the, about the uh, general uh, needs for the, for the uh, climate extremes. It's very, very important to get for the food and ener energy industry, traffic and transportation, and other in in infrastructure. Yeah, for example, uh, nuclear safety issues are very uh, important. And to assess those uh, planted extremes, we need high quality data sets. Well, how to define high quality? This is my my definition for this. We have we have, have to have good physics, good dynamics, and good physics dynamics interaction uh, in, in those data sets. And, Uh, how to evaluate evaluate them? This physics dynamics interaction it's it's usually uh, evaluated from the output, for example the precipitation output. But in many cases, those result distributions in different variables they may look realistic, but uh, there, there might be uh, some some things that make them partly partly wrong, and as well the physics for the same reason it's it's, it's difficult to evaluate from the uh, output data, but the dynamics part of the of the climate, climate information is. It's much more easier, easier to evaluate because because of those uh, strong spatial large scale autocorrelation patterns, which are those low pressure systems in many cases. <clears throat> so we have to concentrate on dynamics in our our analysis. And for for our tools for the for the estimating these extremes, uh, we have at the moment two tools. We may make some sea level modeling in the public sea, and we can uh, analyze the structures of those low pressure systems. Uh, on the right, you can see the modeling grid of our, our uh, sea level model. It's at the moment 50 kilometer grid. And we make those uh, sub daily low pressure system analysis in the same grid as well. So it's very, very uh, kind of <coughs> local study. Uh, this far, we have 
in using two different uh, real analysis data sets, error forcing and error entering. And then we have in investigated those uh, regional climate models, quad uh, uh, ensembles. And, and uh, ensembles models have, have been forced by error 40. And this, this output can be then compared, compared directly, directly to error 40 to get information about those, the goodness of those. Uh, regional climate models. They call it hind, hind casting. In fu future, we will uh, check those cortex regional climate models and maybe some other uh, re analysis data sets as well. <coughs> so, about the C level model. Uh, the Baltic Sea is a, it's a semi-enclosed model, uh, sea, meaning that uh, the water amount in it mm. is very much dominated by the uh, wind, westerly wind, uh, uh, inflow the new water to the sea, and this is, this is the basic level of the of the sea level in the sea. Then there is some other factors which, which can and or must be taken into account. And these are the sea level, the pressure field over the sea, and the surface winds that have been uh, derived from, from those uh, sea level pressure fields. We call it geostrophic winds. So roughly, uh, this water amount and uh, direct air pressure forcing and surface winds, these together contribute very much to the sea level in the, in the uh, Baltic Sea region. There are, of course, some other components, for, for example, tides, but it's not very important. Order of change centimeters at, max, at maximum. So, when we make this kind of height cast, uh, forcing the sea level with those uh, error 40 and error interim reanalysis data sets, we can, we can get as, as high as 0.93 uh, correlation uh, when that correlation is measured between the observations in those measurement stations and the modeled data. And this is pretty high, I think. The rest, uh, why, why this is not 100%, it's, it's very difficult to say, but of course it's, it's, there is uh, our error, like what we are making when we make those sea level simula simulations and the reanalysis error included in this. But how, how much we can, uh, can we distinguish it? It's, it's very hard to say. Uh, this is six hour data which, which we are using at the moment. It's very, uh, it's enough to uh, to get those sub daily variations. So, about the results, uh, the process it's, it's very fast. You can run the model in, in 40 years in seven minutes on a laptop, but uh, interpreting the results it's, it's not that, that easy at all. Uh, in the case, you get bad results. If, if you get good results, then, then everything is fine. You can be happy with, your, with the data. But if you get bad results, uh, you might need some, uh, some other analysis to get, 
to get information about those problems. Uh, and for this purpose, we have another tool, which is this uh, structure analysis of those low pressure systems. In the figure, you can see the cross section of a typical low pressure system. And it, uh, as you can see, it resembles very much an upside down version of the Gaussian, Gaussian curve. And we utilize this shape information. We fit to the, this data uh, the Gaussian distribution curve. And, and collect those amplitude and width information. Uh, oh yeah, this is the algorithm that we use. <coughs> there is some preprocessing of the uh, original data. Uh, and then after the preprocessing steps, we feed uh, this kind of Gaussian surface to the data. And then we collect those uh, standard deviation and, and amplitude of the, these fittings and get, get some information. And then we associate them with the, with the real width and with real length of those low pressure, low pressure systems. And this is preliminary result for this for this analysis. Uh, uh, the yellow color is the original era 40 data, which has been used for for the for the forcing of those original climate models, and. Uh, the purple and green one uh, are different kind of models. Uh, on the right, there is the uh, deviation of the standard deviation of those uh, mass pressure, low pressure systems. And you can see that there is some variability um, between the uh, original data and the, and the modeled data. The purple purple one it's it's the Swedish uh, original climate model, and as you can see, it's much closer to the or original original anaerobic data than the another one, the green, which is the uh, at the center original climate model. Um, on the left, there is uh, the depth of the uh, <coughs> analyzed low pressure systems. And as well, you can see the Swedish model is it's closer to the original error for the data than the, than the uh, green one. And from these figures, you can you can make the conclusion that uh, this Hadley Center model it's it's constantly making uh, low pressure systems which are too deep and too narrow and, and, and we had we had. Uh, this kind of, um, uh, we know this from the sea level model results as well. There is some sudden jumps in the sea level, which can be seen in the other models. Yeah. So, I made, made this uh, analysis code freely available. You can download it from, from this uh, 
address. Uh, it is written in Octaven. And if you use MATLAB, it should be work, work, uh, work in MATLAB as well, but it's not tested in, in MATLAB. So please use Octaven. So, um, so well, yeah. Well, we are planning to make the C level model freely available as well, but it's not not yet that that much developed. Yeah. So that was my presentation. Thank you. Time. Yeah, um, I was wondering, does the resolution, do you think, does it have an effect? I mean, ERA 40, I think it has a resolution of about, I don't know, 120 kilometers, and the RCMs have a resolution of 25 kilometers, yeah. I guess. So yeah. do you think that might have an effect, and if so, to what direction? Uh, well, uh, the best part of sea level modeling is that uh, it uh, kind of integrates all that, all those things. So we can get uh, this high mean correlation with both era 40 and era interim, even though the resolution with era 40 is much lower. Okay. And with the, um, the figure that you showed about the, the, the results, if you go a little bit further ahead, um, this one. this one, yeah. So, do you think uh, the resolution has an effect on how deep the the low pressure systems are? Or? Uh, the, this is basically uh, taking into account the large scale, synoptic scale, uh, and maybe some mesoscale low pressure systems. Uh, but uh, I think. The major major effect can be seen in, in those those large large scale and, and, and that kind of of low pressure systems. So I think in many cases with those regional cloud models, there is a risk that uh, you make some additional errors to the pressure fields when you when you make its original kind of modeling. Any other questions? Yes. And did you make all your calculations by Octa? Yeah, the original sea level model is written in Fortran. But I think that we don't we don't have to uh, look at that Fortran code. It's it's invoked from from Octave all the time. Yes. So you use the C level model to estimate the uh, last risk in the area, like how <coughs> what kind of C level chains or what kind of maximum sea level can we expect in a hundred years? Are there any chances of hitting like a large hit in that the don't have seen here? So do you have an idea about <laughs> this? Yeah, uh, we have made those uh, uh, scenario simulations to the end of the century. But uh, the preliminary result is that there there are not uh, any trends in the field occurrence, but uh, it, it, it doesn't mean that uh, sudden looting would be not possible. <laughs> but uh, there, has there been serious flooding in the past? from uh, uh, windstorms. Yeah, in 2005 it was uh, 
quite high sea level. For example, here in Helsinki, uh, as Petri Dals showed, there was uh, a flood in, 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 in the harbor. And yeah, this is uh, nuclear companies are really very interested in this, this kind of data. This project didn't quite understand the, <coughs> kind of the distinction between you. You said that you should focus on dynamics rather than physics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you want to improve the whole system, how important is dynamics and how important the physics are? Uh, so we should really elaborate. Uh, well, I think that, that this physics dynamics interaction and, and all those things together contribute to the dynamics. So when you measure just the dynamics, you, 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 can, uh, you, you will get some, some kind of indirect information about those uh, model physics. So if you, if you get uh, four dynamics outputs, you can uh, make, make a conclusion that there is some problem. Maybe, maybe in physics or in the dynamics itself. It's just an indicator. Did I get the answer? I suppose these are issues that could be discussed. Physics, dynamics, and what all of you know uh, about these things, if you have been working on those. And uh, later today, with this reanalysis session, probably, you could also address these issues physics and dynamics, if possible. If